that I was addicted to was heroin for like a good three, three probably like a three to six month period of time, starting from snorting the drug to straight intravenous. But as I say, lo que tu quieres, you can do anything you want to do, cause you are worth it. Vales mucho. What's up, y'all? Best wife ever here with my boy, Emmanuel. Tell him what's up, Emmanuel. What's up? Uh, how you not doing? <laughs> yeah. I just want to share him with you because he is so amazing. This is my special little guy and he's so cool. He's smart. He's wise. He's got everything and he's got so much to share with you guys. He's going to change this world y'all. So I want to hand it over to him. I want to tell you he is a great guy. He's a musician. He's been through a lot of stuff that he can really change your life y'all. So check him out. This is a new friend for you, Emmanuel. Hey, tell them why you came to Los Angeles, Emmanuel. Well, I came to Los Angeles to work on my music career, like actually get it started to going. Um, I've been procrastinating on it for years now uh, to the point where it led to a drug addiction. But five years come this October, I'll be clean. Um, it's a big, big, big surprise for me and my family, a big uh, celebration. Surprise. So. Um, that's a step forward in my life that I have. I still hold no regrets on. Uh, I learned a really big lesson during that time period. Um, it's also probably most likely is a lot of it's going. A lot of me talking in my music is going to be about what I did go through during that time period. How I treated my family, people who did see me as friends. Uh, yeah, it's pretty like pretty much and just like the progression I came from from that era, from that dark age of my life. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so what kind of music, what do you think, or what would your genre be? Um, I'm open genre. I don't have a specific genre that I really do, like, gravitate towards. I mean, people would probably see it as, like, hip-hop or um, rap. Um, maybe some people might even see it as a little bit of reggae. Um, it's, like, really a collaboration of multiple, multiple genres because it's, like, every genre is an influence Eclectic. to me. Yeah, yeah very, very, very. Me too. That's how I feel, too. That's cool. Okay, yeah. I can't wait to hear it though. You, you what do you, you want to share some bars with us or no? Uh, not at this time. <laughs> I am still a little bit stage fright. Um, I'm, that's what I'm currently working on right now is getting over my stage fright. I have a friend. Um, Y'all should check him out too. He's a uh, his glass uh, glass box chef. Um, he's a really good uh, producer engineer. Um, very good. A uh, really great independent artist. All in all. Um, he's helping me get over my fear of that, uh, working with me. Uh, hopefully we'll be in the studio next week uh, if that happens. I'm probably definitely going to go live just so everybody can actually see what I am really about. Like I can't really, we were supposed to do it this week, but you know, timing and uh, appointment wise for that, it kind of like messed everything up. So next week, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, well, I'll be in the studio next week. That'd be so. cool. So how'd you know this this glass box chef guy? Um, we met at a Airbnb that we stay at. I currently still stay there as well. So. <laughs> oh, do I know him? Yes, you do. What's his real name? Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Jordan. Jordan Diamond Fuller. Um, it's really really good. Great great friend since I've been out here. Probably one like one of the main people I can actually call friends since I've been out here. Uh, really 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 good. Uh, <laughs> I could say he's a mentor in a way. Um, he does like. Keeps me out my, my my dark zone where I shouldn't be at anyways. So yeah, like it's cool. it's really 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 good. Like really good motivator uh, in his own way at, at least you know. And everybody's a good motivator to people you know. But like he's really good motivate at motivating me to keep doing what I'm I, I need to do. Encouraging you, yes, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's good. That's what we all need. We all need encouragement, y'all, and that's why I'm here to encourage you. And when you comment below, you'll encourage Emmanuel and you'll encourage me, and I'll be like, hey, I did a great interview, right? All right, Emmanuel. So. Can you tell us a little about this dark period that you were talking about earlier in your life? Um, yes, it was a, a drug addiction. I actually got hooked up into. Actually, like back home, I'm, I'm I'm known as an equal opportunity user. It didn't matter what <laughs> drug it was. My drug of choice was drugs. Yeah. Um, it, and that was one of the main ones was it, that I was addicted to was heroin for like a good three, three probably like a three to six month period of time, starting from snorting the drug to straight intervening wow. and um, the spiral just went downhill. It was on pain management, which was what started that addiction. Yeah. And uh, 
like, I wanted to rehab only one time. Um, feel, just being in there for the 21 days that I was in there for um, opened my eyes really, really, really loud to the point where I, I talked to a 74 year old man who had diabetes and didn't was missing half his from his knee down on his one leg and we really got into like a really really personal conversation where like he literally woke me up just just basically using him as himself as, as like the, the example of just saying hey look I'm here still I can't get off these drugs I can't get off the alcohol I don't want this the same for you you're young yeah and when I was in in rehab I was, I'm 27 now I was only 23 still young just like barely barely my ears dry basically and like just learning the 21 days i was in there learning what i learned from this guy learning what i learned from the staff there has kept me pushing forward it doesn't like it, like the regrets like i literally dropped my the, every single regret that i held against anybody like family members friends acquaintances people who i just met in life at a certain period of time like all your resentments yeah like all, everybody it, yes yeah like i like I, instantly like at that point in time like there's no reason for me to keep holding on to this it's not something that's going to push me forward in life it's going to pull me backwards in life and there's no the only person who's doing that is me and at, at that point in time is when that fell away from me and i'm like all right no more excuses uh, i'm it's time for me to get up and get going no more uh t saying blaming somebody else for something i had done to the choice i had made and like once I started realizing, I kept waking myself up more and more and more, changing my sleeping style, changing the way I do things in life. And like now, like I mean, I'm still feel like I'm kind of on East Coast time, <laughs> but you know, it's still, it feels great though. It feels great to wake up in the morning to just like go outside and meditate in the morning and reflect mm -hmm. on myself, remembering where I came from, where I'm going, and I'm like I'm not stopping. Just, I'm yeah. not stopping just here in LA. Exactly, dude. Yeah. That's exactly where I'm at right now, man. I'm so glad we did this today. I mean, yeah, I'm so, and I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, just, I'm not sorry, actually. Like, my, can I, do you mind if I share something? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Because this is about you, but the, the reason why you touched my heart when we first met, that was like the first thing you told me was that you were, you had gone to rehab and you were clean, you got off heroin and stuff. And that really touched me because, um, my brother was on heroin for a long time and we didn't know if he was going to live or not, you know? And, um, it was right after he just had a baby, you know? And so my niece was like, my mother and I, we took care of her and I would, you know, make dinner and take it over. Cause I used to live right across the street. We lived in our, we had our own separate trailers, but we, you know, it's like, I was on my knees begging God, please. Like this is right after I got clean, like a year after I got clean. And now my brother's out, you know, and it was like, to me, it was harder to watch him go through that than my own thing, you know? Cause it's like, I can, I can take control of me, you know? But I couldn't control my brother. I couldn't find him. I couldn't. I couldn't make him stop. You know, and and I I went through a lot with even after when we first saw him again. Many times he had relapsed and everything. But I mean, I know it's hard. It's so hard to get off drugs, especially heroin. So that's why every time I meet somebody and they tell me they're clean, and especially when they say heroin, I'm like that. Now that person needs to be acknowledged. That that is a precious. I want to keep that per. If I can keep that person in my life somehow, I want to keep them around because, especially you, because you know where you're going. Like you're not. You're like I'm not. I just said that. It's like I'm not stopping for nobody. Okay, feelings like what's love got to do with it? You know what I mean? I care. I love a lot of people, but nobody's gonna keep me broke. Nobody's gonna let me. Uh, keep me to the point where I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not hanging around you. Now I'm going to go sleep outside again. I lived on Skid Row when I first moved here. And I'm not going back. And I'm also not staying where I'm at. I'm going up, and that's exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm thankful that you're here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, just, I, was, I appreciate you, man. I just want to acknowledge you for all you've come through and, you know, and just for being here today, showing up, keeping your word, and, and just sharing with us because I know you're going to touch so many lives just today, just from this uh, interview here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you were telling me something else. What were you, you were telling me a really interesting story. Um, it was, oh, no, you were telling me that you what, when you went to Skid Row, remember? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, when I first moved here, like, I've been, only been here like five months. Uh, come May 8th, it'll be exactly five months since I've been here. 
in LA. Uh, and on Christmas, out of all days, like I walked with a couple of roommates from the Airbnb I stay at, and uh, we went to Skid Row. And that like really was like an eye opener, and like just watching like a like it was a, it's a city within a city basically. Mm -hmm. and, That's what I said. And like just watching these people, like how they they live, how they have to survive. A lot of them don't look like they have means to like try and even get a job in honesty or any other thing. They just want to live there and do the things that they do normally. But that was a really big eye opener just coming here to LA and seeing that like firsthand not realizing like, like yeah homelessness is everywhere in the united states it's even really big where i'm in pennsylvania mm -hmm. but coming here to la is like 10 times full from where i'm from and like seeing that like that seeing the people and the way that the way that they are really open my eyes like i don't want to be that way and coming to la it's a doggy dog world literally and it's, it's either you make it or you break it here and like literally i almost killed myself no joke almost killed myself trying to just to get a job here what do you mean like i wasn't eating properly wasn't keeping hydrated to the point i fainted on my own birthday and was in the hospital wow uh went into hypertension even i also donated plasma that day too so that oh, didn't wow. really, that didn't really help <laughs> and uh but yeah like just that happening to me going to skid row and seeing that for firsthand, like, all right, yo, I really either, I gotta pace myself at the same time as be a go-getter and go get it because I got the money in my pocket. It's just waiting for, for me to grab it out. And seeing Skid Row definitely made me realize, like, either either I do or I, or I don't. And if I don't, I'm ending here on Skid, Skid Row. And that's something I don't want to, right. don't want, I don't want that to happen to me, nor do I would like that to happen to anybody around me because that is not a way to live. It's not. Right. Exactly. Okay, so I want to ask you about, you told me about Post Malone. Remember that story you told me about behind his music and stuff? Yeah. Tell me about how you started liking Post Malone's music. Well, at first I didn't even like the guy, to be honest. I was like, oh, where is this guy coming from? I'm, honestly, I'm coming home from jail too at the same time. I, I did a little time because of my uh, drug addiction. Um, so I'm coming home to like really a new scene of music that I'm you know everybody when they see something new they want to push it away right away you know I, I was one of those people until like I was like all right so what is really up with this guy he's still going to this day still making really good music to this day he still has a really huge a really huge fame base and so I looked him up and I was like oh yo he's kind of from kind of the same background as me he has a music background just like I do um and he's doing it he did it on his own and i'm like all right and one thing that me and post how post malone have a common is that we both were um tried to be in a metal band and both a got, metal band yeah <laughs> both, both got denied <laughs> so like uh that that's like that's like literally what literally linked me to post malone in his music and got a better understanding on where he came from and why he's where he's at where he's at right now and that was like a motivation right there, just knowing where somebody came from and how they progressed in the, the couple of years or like the four years he's been out now or whatever, how long it's been. And that's just like my motivation, like a young kid, like he is going as far as where he's at right now. And then now I'm going to, I'm not going to say I'm following his tracks, I'm following my own. But he's and I'm inspired get there. you. Yeah, he inspired like, me to get back on track. Like he's evidence that you can do it. Yes. Basically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I get that. That's cool. And the reason why I bring this story up, guys, is because that's why I'm interviewing him. I I mentioned to Em and Yell, like, hey, like we're both gonna get our music out there. We're gonna get our albums out soon. And so, I think it would be wise. Now I know that it would be wise to to kind of start from the outside in you know because a lot of people they get there they do their music and then and then they want to tell the story behind the music but I think it, it's wiser just to we give give you Eminem's background now and so now okay so now you know him and you're like oh now oh look he finally came out with a song let's go hear his song let's hear his album or whatever because you're like yeah I can relate to him like I've been through a lot of his stuff his music is gonna be banging you know what I mean you're gonna love that stuff it's gonna be addictive so that's why I'm gonna do it just and that's what I'm doing for myself too we have to get to know each other in order for us to be friends and because friends 
don't let friends sleep outside, right? <laughs> friends help each other out, though. So, uh, buy our albums, that's all. <laughs> if you feel comfortable, what is it like with, well, I should say, what was it like growing up with your family life, you know? And then, what's it like now? And, you know, what kind of family did you grow up with? Like, mom, stepdad, brothers and sisters, what? Um, I grew up with my dad at a younger age. Uh, actually, my I, my parents been divorced since I was two, so uh, it was kind of like a back and forth uh, type deal thing with them between back and forth between Philly and uh, I think Lebanon, yeah, Lebanon, Pennsylvania, where my, where my mom was at, mm -hmm. on a, all the way up until uh, to high school. To be honest, uh, wow. I moved down to South Carolina. I lived in Charleston, James Island. To oh be wow. You were telling me that. Um, <laughs> I, like two years, I, I lived down there. Majority of the time was spent, spent between, spent in Philly, living in there um, with my dad. Uh, my dad kind of was like a workaholic type deal person. So like I, my stepmom was there. So I, I literally tell people I didn't grow up with a dad because I didn't, he wasn't there. Um, my stepmom raised me and my mom raised me. So I tell people I have two moms and they look at me <laughs> confused. Like, what do you mean? Um, and then I, t I explained what I just told you guys. Well, my stepmom raised me, my mom raised me. So like, I only see them as my parents. Uh, I still talk to my stepmom today, even though she's no longer with my dad today. Um, That's cool. I have two brothers with her as well. So I like to keep in check with them. Found out that my little brother, one of my little brothers is shaving already and I didn't get to start to shave until <laughs> I was 23. And I'm How old like, is he? He's turning 13 or 15 oh, wow. this year, something like that. I don't, think, I don't remember exactly when he was born. Like 2005, I think he was born. <laughs> so, yeah, a little over 10 years old. Not 10 years old, and he's already shaving before his older brother. Oh wow! <laughs> so it's <laughs> yeah, pretty good, yeah. But uh, growing up, exactly is uh, really we were really all close. To be honest, uh, we're still not all of us are really close. But like me and my older brother, my one sister, we have the same mom and dad. Um, kind of almost went through the same thing growing up. Um, we uh we we have a bond that's like really like no other like we don't have to see or talk to each other you don't have what we don't we have a bond that doesn't you don't we don't see each other we don't talk oh, okay. to each other for like months um but like it's when we when we do come back t together for like a family event or something you and your sister me and my sister my, my older brother um we uh it's like we never even left each other so it's like we we, we, have, we have a bond it's like an un unseparable bond to be honest like that's we're really, cool. really close yeah that's cool but um, so I was now I was thinking, um, didn't you? But didn't you um, experience some abuse though as a child or something? Yeah, I'm a victim of child abuse uh, from my father when he would be around. Uh, I guess I would do something wrong, and the first thing he would do is just lash out. And, uh, something like I, I used to hold really, really dear regret, like uh, resentment for, and now I'm like over it because like it didn't do anything good in my life. Just uh, hold something like that back on myself and like me doing it to myself saying I'm um, thinking like oh people will find pity on me I can get somewhere with that yeah and but no it doesn't work that way in life like no matter what you go through in life you shouldn't use it as an excuse to exactly. uh, like hold yourself back you shouldn't um, yes yeah you should you should just keep progressing in life like yeah I'm not saying forget about it but you know forgive it already it's, forgive it's it, not yeah. gonna it's not gonna change it already happened there's nothing you can do about it now yeah you know, like if you if you can't progress from that, you're not gonna progress from anything, right? Really, and like you're gonna stay holding yourself back. The whole exactly. Time. Yeah, because you know what you hold on to hinders you. What you hold on to in life, and even if it's something good, you have a good compliment you don't share. But if you have something that's in your past, you need to let it go because what you hold on to hinders you. But what what you but what you let go, like he he let go of it. So now. A lot of people in life don't let go of things and they, they hold on to the past. So now that he let go of it, just like same with me, now he has a mission and he wants to help people and he's going to show you that you're worth it. You can overcome anything, you can conquer anything, you can do anything, but it's everything is up here. You know, you just have to know that you're worth it and you have to ask yourself, do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? You know, because 
You know, like they're going around playing the victim. The thing is about that is that you're just gonna blend in with everybody else because everybody else is the victim too. Oh, uh, how you doing today? Oh, it's okay. It's raining outside. I gotta be at work. I got a job and a place to sleep. You know, everybody's always complaining about everything. That was the biggest thing about being homeless is that I knew no matter what, no matter what happens, I'm gonna be grateful because I was sleeping outside, but damn it, I had a mission to come here and show you that you're worth it. I said, I don't care what it takes. I don't care how long it takes. As long as I don't steal or lie or, or, or go, go anywhere and do anything that's out of the Bible that's against my standards and, and, and my values, then I know that I can make a difference in this world and I am not, I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make, to, that's anything, whatever it takes that's within my standards, you know, sleeping outside. What's wrong with that? That's my pride. Other people look at me like I'm a victim. Well, that's because they're a victim. They see themselves as a victim. I'm not a victim. I'm the winner. I'm the victor. That's why my middle name is Victorious, okay? So I'm here to show you, I, hey, man, I paid the price. I changed my name. I forgave people, you know? And just like he said, he's so right about everything. If you want to do something, you'll find the way. And if you don't, you'll find an excuse, right? Exactly, exactly. Like, uh, like a lot of people like to say... Um, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. No, you're still comfortable at that point in time, so you need to stay uncomfortable. So get c uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes. Because the only way you can progress in life is when you do th doing something that you don't like. If you don't like it, but it's moving you forward in life, keep doing it. Because if we keep doing it, you're gonna get farther and farther in life. Yeah. And like a lot, uh, one thing I do on my Instagram, which you can follow me at either let let that um. Um, all I do really on there for us, not really for my music, it's for motivational quotes for myself, which I know if it helps me, I know it's going to help somebody else. So you can check me out on there, on Instagram, check out my, uh, my quotes uh, that I like to say. It helps me go out throughout the day, maybe it might help you guys too. Yes, exactly. And I will post his YouTube channel below and his phone number, I'm just kidding, <laughs> his, his Instagram. And you know something, I just want a... Hey, I mean, y'all, I just want to celebrate you right now. I'm so proud of you, and I'm so glad we did this because just like I do my YouTube channel, I started this off for me, and that's why I wanted to, I did want to hang out with you today, so <laughs> I wanted to get this on camera, and I wanted to show the world to you, and then later on, you know, you can watch this yourself and be like, man, I was pretty good. I was like, you know, <laughs> yeah. he'll, he'll feel good about himself because he was such a great speaker and everything. And, and all these, and then maybe he'll feel down one day and he'll be like, I need to watch that. And then, you know, oh, that's just what I needed. Cause I remember what I said, you know, and this is why I'm doing this. And so, yeah, I just want to celebrate Eminem. And guys, I want you to get down there, comment, celebrate Eminem with me. Encourage him, thank him for all he's doing because he's going very far in life. And trust me, this is very hard. It is not easy because we're learning new things. It's just a mental thing. And we know we can do it because we're doing it for you because you are worth it. Thank you, Edmund Yell. Thank you. Love you, man. Appreciate you. you. I know, I know. I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and sharing is caring on all your social media. You are worth it.